So now we have both a potential function and a mechanism to update coordinates. That's all we need. This is a small example system of water just to give you a feeling of the timescales. I think this entire movie covers a few picoseconds or so. That means that the individual time steps to, to integrate the fastest motions correctly, they're going to need to be in the ballpark of femtoseconds. In fact, if I have individual bonds that vibrate here, I need to stick to one femtosecond time steps, 10 to the minus 15. I would need to do 10 to the power of 15 steps to reach a second. That would never happen. We would like to extend that, and I'll get back to how in a second. Uh, but in principle, we can set up a simulation flowchart now. You're going to need some sort of state to start from. If it's water, I can throw out water molecules randomly or form an ice crystal. Or if it's a protein, I can get one in the protein data bank. Or maybe you can create a small helix structure yourself based on how a helix should look like. Then we're going to need to calculate the forces. Uh, and that comes from this potential definition. To tell the truth, we never calculate the potential. We calculate the forces directly because we typically don't need the potential. I might calculate the potential every 100 steps to write out what the energy is. But I don't need V to get to the next time step, just, v, just F. The second part I'm going to need, I'm going to need to apply Newton's equations of motions to update my positions. And once I've done that, I probably want to calculate some properties such as energy and temperature. I might want to save the coordinates to a trajectory so that I can look at them. That's the last round box there. And then it's time to go back and keep doing this millions of times. And that's the problem. Because on the one hand, we have some very costly interactions here, as I told you. But B, we're going to need to rep uh, reproduce this every, sorry, repeat this every one femtosecond. Now, there are a couple of tricks we can do to make this faster. If I want to do this faster, remember the limitation. The leapfrog integrator needed roughly five points per period. So if I want to take longer time steps, I should remove the fastest motion in the system. And one of those fast motions was an individual bond vibrating. And that's why, as I mentioned already in lecture one, it turns out to be very convenient to replace those springs that are anyway crappy representation of an harmonic bond and just have these bonds be constants. You might not be able to see it here, but trust me, they are not changing in length. In this particular water model, even the angle here is fixed. That also turns out to be a perfectly adequate representation because I'm, not, I'm interested in water here as a solvent to my proteins, not having a perfect water model. So with a few of those simplifications, I might be able to get to two or maybe four femtoseconds if I'm lucky. But somewhere there, I'm starting having torsions and other things involved that I simply can't remove anymore. So no matter how you slice this, we're going to end up doing billions of time steps to get to interesting timescales. So you're going to need a fast computer here.